It is a great pleasure to introduce the first speaker, is Dr. Prof. Dr. Savir Ansari. Uh, I, I believe he is very well known, and uh, he wants to be uh, just only presented as Prof. Dr. Savir Ansari. Uh, all the best, and uh, I'm sure that you will enjoy the lecture, uh, How to Interpret Blood Gases. Thank you. Dr. Samir. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Thanks uh, for you, and it's a great pleasure for me, really, to sharing you. Thanks for Dr. Walid, Dr. Uh, Walid Aswa, Dr. Hisham, uh, Dr. Sam. Uh, th uh, thanks for the attendees, uh, and welcome. Uh, really, uh, today I am going to speak about very simple uh, topic, but uh, it is uh, highly mandatory in the ICU. Uh, uh, which is the ABG interpretation. Uh, and as we see, we, we have uh, to take idea about what running inside the patients, what is about the pH, the carbon dioxide, the tension, arterial oxygenation, and the concentration of bicarb. And that first I want to running fast or memorize you by the oxygen indices and what running and what you must know about ABG, or basic ABG, parameters. The partial pressure of oxygen, as we know, it is 90 in the arterial, 40 in the venous uh, system. Oxygen saturation is uh, 98. In the venous, uh, venous saturation, 73. About the oxygen content, also very important, how much in the arterial and how much in the venous. And what is the difference between the two? Blood volume, as you know, the arterial blood volume is about 1.25 liters only in contrast to venous blood volume, which is about 3.57 liters. So maximum, the most of the oxygen is found in the venous system because of blood is about 75% found in the uh, venous uh, system. This is, and in this is also, we have to be oriented with the normal values of the uh, physiology, cardiac output, how much we put it, because it will affect the quantity of oxygen delivered to the patient. Normal value 2.4 to 4 liters per, per minute per square meter. Uh, also, oxygen delivery, how much? About 520 to 600 ml per minute per square meter. And oxygen delivery control the oxygen uptake and also the oxygen extraction, how much? It normally it is about 20% to 30%. This value guide me to the abnormal value. I must be oriented with this normal, uh, with this normal value and in oxygen indices. Also, you must have idea about the oxygen decision care and what is the causes of shift and right left. As you know, from the physiology, basic physiology, acidemia, high temperature, increased carbon dioxide, increased 2, 3, DBG, diphosphoglycerate, shift is a curve to right side and so facilitates the oxygen delivery to the tissues and to the capillary system also. Uh, shift left, left uh, shift to the left on contrast in cases of alkalemia, low temperature, increased carbon dioxide, uh, decrease to 3 dBg. And as we see, the oxygen curve is S-shaped, and this is very important because the upper flat part will be not affect, will not affect the arterial oxygen pressure or high arterial oxygen pressure during the shifting of the curve. The venous blood or the capillary blood, as we see, lying on the steep portion of the curve here, and <laughs> at 40 millimeter mercury is the venous blood. And we must be also oriented with the P50, at which the 50% of hemoglobin is saturated with oxygen, it is about 27 millimeter mercury. Uh, during the shift, as in stored blood, will be shifted to left and even reach below 20 millimeter mercury. We have to be oriented with this basic uh, physiology. Also, the oxygen content is very important and mandatory, more than the oxygen pressure. Oxygen pressure reflects the state at the lung, what happened at the lung level. But oxygen content tell you how much oxygen is in the body. And so it depends on hemoglobin concentration and saturation. And so if the patient suffering from drop in hemoglobin content by 50% in he will be, he, as we see, will affect the oxygenation and the oxygen content too much than if drop 50% in, in, uh, in hypoxemia. And suppose the oxygen pressure reaches 45 millimeter mercury and the hemoglobin reaches 7.5 millimeter mercury. The effect will be larger on oxygen content in cases of anemia. And so we must concentrate 
how much oxygen delivery and how much hemoglobin is in this patient. Uh, this oxy, we must be, we must be oriented to the type of this oxy. If it is tissue hypoxia, as in case of cardiogenic shock and hypovolemic shock, or it is cytopacid, the problem in the mitochondria as in sepsis, severe sepsis, septic shock, and so on. Oxygen depth, what is meant by oxygen depth? Oxygen depth, as we know, oxygen, oxygen content equal oxygen delivery times oxygen extraction. Suppose the oxygen delivery is going down and there is oxygen extraction that reaches the maximum, which is normally 20 to 30 percent, as I said, but it reaches 50 percent. If it reaches more than 50 percent, there will be more oxygen depth, as we see. And the oxygen depth is a good parameter and a good marker before lactate rising by about six hours. And so it is a very sensitive parameter, very sensitive index. We can depend on it for detecting early state of hypoxia, or early state for anaerobic metabolism, and early state before even lactate rising. And so it is important. As we see here, oxygen content, oxygen uptake, equal oxygen delivery, multiplying is extraction part of the oxygen. And so suppose the oxygen delivery is going down, the extraction will be rising, rising, and so on. It is normally 20 to 30 percent, but if it is rise to maximum 50 percent, at this point, any drop in oxygen delivery will affect the oxygen uptake directly, and there is a linear decrease in the oxygen availability and oxygen uptake, and so the patient is suffering from tissue hypoxia. This oxygen indices, it is very important, and I want to start just to memorize you what is oxygen indices who must know about our patient in dealing with ABG. Alveolar arterial oxygen difference. Uh, you, as you know, the barometric pressure is 706, normal at sea level. Water vapor pressure 45. And so the pressures will be equal uh, <coughs> 7, 760 minus 45, timing the oxygen concentration in air, which is 21%. Give me the, uh, the pressure of oxygen which can reach the alveolar. And so support if, if from this equation, al alveolar arterial oxygen reference, I can judge what, she, what is the cause of respiratory failure. If it is ventilatory failure or it is oxygenation, oxygenation failure as in cases of RDS. Suppose the patient coming with CO2 80 millimeter mercury as in cases of ventilatory failure. The, actual, the pressure inside the alveolar oxygen pressure 150 minus 80 over divided by respiratory quotients, it will equal 50 millimeter mercury. And the difference here will be 50 minus 45 will be five, which is normal. But if the difference is high, as in this example, it is an oxygenation failure. And so if the alveolar arterial oxygen pressure difference is great more than 10 in, in young adult or more than 20 in old age, it meaning that there is an oxygenation failure, not ventilatory failure. Also, you must know the patient who living at sea level differ from the patient living in high altitudes. In high altitudes, that the oxygen carbon dioxide will be low because many there is some sort of low oxygen stimulation of the chemoreceptors, the capnia increasing minute volume, CO2 will drop, and also the HCO3 and ABG will be low for to compensate for this respiratory alkalosis. Uh, hypoxia, we must know the grades of hypoxia mild from 60 to 80 millimeter mercury, med uh, moderate from 40 to 60, and severe hypoxemia less than 40 millimeter mercury. Also, you have to mention in your ABG how much FI2 you're using. And you can imagine how much arterial oxygen pressure must be. And this is very simple. You can multiply your FI2 by five. Suppose a patient FI2 receiving FI2 20%, 20 times five, equal, you must, uh, arterial oxygen pressure must equal 100. Suppose he's receiving 50% FI2, he, the oxygen pressure will be 250. Suppose he take one FI2 one, 100%, this, this meaning is the oxygen pressure in your EBG must be about 500 or 480 and so on. If less than this, this patient, your patient suspect he is suffering from some problems in the oxygenation. Uh, for interpretation of EBG, 
there are many systems for interpreting the disease. There is the henderson hasselbeck equation, which we depend on, which is simple, appealing, and but really sometimes not trustable, like a Stewart approach. There is a Copenhagen approach. There is a Boston approach. We concentrate, uh, concentrate today on henderson hasselbeck equations. Stewart is a Canadian uh, fossilologist who created this approach since 30 years, and it is very competent, and it depends on the strong ion difference, depend on calcium, magnesium, sodium, and so on, and the difference between it and the, uh, the anions, which is chloride and lactate, and so on. Uh, we will concentrate today on the henderson hasselbeck equations. And I think this system is competent by the end when we add to it the anion gaps, the delta gaps, or smaller gaps, the urinary gap. All these make the henderson hasselbeck equations very simple and easy to, uh, to interpret it. Uh, <laughs> strong ion difference, as I said, the steward depend on strong ion difference, and so if lactate, for example, increased, it will decrease the pH, and so on. The important three items in EBG, which I concentrate on, and if you want to uh, look at it, in, uh, in addition, of course, to the oxygenation state, as I said at first, the pH, which is normal 7.4, carbon dioxide pressure, 40 millimeter mercury, is appreciated and by carb about 24 millimeter mercury. Uh, the body internal environment of the body maintained at normal pH 7.4 or maintaining the hydrogen ion concentration normal, which is about 40 nano equivalent. You can imagine 40 nano equivalent is the hydrogen ion concentration in our body to produce 7.4 pH. You, you imagine nano equivalent is less than 1 million milli equivalent. All the ions in our body are measured in milli equivalent. Milli equivalent equals 1 million. And so the hydrogen ion concentration in our body very, very, very small quantity. I, I regard it as a trace element, really. It is a very small. And so to maintain this pH or to maintain the hydrogen ion concentration, we have any change in CO2 or any change in H2O3 will be compensated by the isolate. If there is a change in the carbon dioxide, it will produce to me a respiratory problem, respiratory acid base imbalance, maybe respiratory acidosis. If this CO2 increases, if it is dropped, it will give me respiratory problems. Also, by carb, if increasing by carb, it will give me <coughs> metabolic alkalosis. If dropped, it will give me metabolic acid. And it will be compensated by the other item or by the other parameters, which is here, CO2 or H2O3. H C carbon dioxide, as we see, and uh, by carb, all are dependable factors. And so this is a drawback of Henderson Hasselbeck system for evaluation of inter or interpretation of EBG, in contrast to Stewart, which depend on independable factors. And so we have in the Henderson equations, the body try to keep these equations in fixed state, try to keep the hydrogen ion concentrations uh, normal, which is about 40 nanoequivalents. And I want to say a uh, very important point in cases of acidosis, for example, or increasing the hydrogen ion concentrations, the problem not in acidosis itself, but in the underlying mechanism of acidosis. What is causing acidosis? You can't, you can't compare uh, different types of acidosis with each other from the survival point of view. You can't compare diabetic ketoacidosis with lactic acidosis, there is a great difference. In lactic acidosis, the survival is very bad in contrast to ketosis or starvation and so on. Uh, and hydrogen ion concentration, I said it is expressed in nano equivalent. It is, uh, pH is minus 12 hydrogen ion concentration. And the regulation of acid-base balance in our body is done through many, many uh, ways. Chemical buffer, through chemical buffers, uh, through hydrogen and potassium exchange, by carb chloride exchange, and also physiologically through the lung and the kidney. Uh, pH, we call the pH is normal or complementary when it is normal, this complementary if the pH is abnormal. ABG interpretations, if we start to say, uh, to, uh, to describe how I interpret this ABG. I ask first, is the patient acidemic or alkalemic? 
is the primary disorder, the respiratory or metabolic. If the respiratory, it is acute or chronic, acute or chronic. If because the compensation here in respiratory will take about two days, three days, and so there is acute states, acute states, and chronic states. In contrast to the in contrast to respiratory compensation, it is very rapid, take about few hours and completed in one day, most. If metabolic acidosis is there is an anion gap or no. And if this anion gap is high anion gap or normal anion gap, if there is a smaller gap, if there is gap gap, yeah, which, which is delta gap, yeah, we will see together how to interpret this parameter. Is there is a provocate compensation? If no, what is the second disorder that's found in this one? In the setting of anion gap metabolic acidosis, is there is another uh, problem? What is the delta gap? All these questions we have to answer it. Five steps of successful blood gas analysis. Step one, look at the pH. If the patient is acidemic pH will be less than 7.4. If he is alkalemic pH more than 7.4. Step two, carbon dioxide will change pH in opposite direction. And so if you find the pH and the carbon dioxide in opposite direction, it is a respiratory. If it is pH and bicarb in the same direction, or pH and bi in the same direction, the metabolic. And so I can differentiate respiratory from metabolic from the direction, the primary disorder and the secondary, uh, uh, secondary effect or compensatory effect. In the same direction, it is a metabolic. If in opposite direction, it is a respiratory. Acidemia, what is the meaning of acidemia? With bicarb less than 24, it is a metabolic acid. With arterial CO2 more than 40, it is a respiratory, a respiratory acid. With HCO3 less, uh, more than 24, it is a metabolic alkalinia. With CO2 less than 40, it is a respiratory alkalinia. Step uh, three after that, if there is a primary respiratory disturbance, how it is acute, or how I can know it is acute, how can I differentiate it is acute or chronic? If every 10 millimeter mercury change of arterial carbon dioxide, it changed the pH by 0.08 in acute state. And it changed by 0.03 change in pH in chronic state. If I, I, I hold the ABG uh, paper strap in my hand and this is a bicarb, if bicarb change too much, it is a chronic or the, as a compensatory. If, uh, carb, if bicarb is still not changed too much, it is an acute. If I wanted to calculate every 10 millimeter mercury of a change in arterial carbon dioxide, it changes the pH by 0.08 and it changed by 0.03 in chronic. Uh, this is a simplified diagram to, to show to the beginner uh, how much, uh, what is them. In metabolic acidosis, what happens? The bicarb will go down, as you see. Bicarb going down from metabolic acidosis. This is the primary disorder, bicarb going down. This is a metabolic. Compensation, I suspect compensation by, by carbon dioxide. It will go up or down, of course. It will go, go down. Always the compensation in the same direction of the primary change. All those compensation, either respiratory or metabolic, in the same direction. Compensation here due to drop in HCO3 will be drop in, in CO2, as we see. Drop too much at first and then slowly. And also the pH will drop down rapidly. And after compensation, it will go to near normal pH or complementary pH. And as we see, the compensation here is in the same direction, primary lesion, compensation by carbon dioxide, pH drop. In metabolic state, all the three parameters go, this, go together in the same direction. If by carbon drop, the carbon dioxide drop, the pH drop. And in the reverse in metabolic alkalosis, I said in the metabolic alkalosis, the primary region, of course, HCO3 will go up, as we see here. Carbon dioxide compensatory will go up, and the pH also will go up. And so the three parameters are in the same direction together. This is a metabolic. 
Shift to respiratory problems. If respiratory acidosis, the primary lesion will be here. Respiratory acidosis, CO2, of course, will increase. The compensation, I told you, in the same direction, always. Either the metabolic or respiratory. Compensation here will be by bicarb. Bicarb will go up to compensate for this respiratory acidosis. pH, as you see, will go down with increasing CO2 in the reverse direction to the primary change, which is increasing in CO2. In respiratory alkalosis, the reverse, okay, here, in respiratory alkalosis, CO2 will go down, as we see, by carb will go down, of course, and the pH will go up. This is a summary for the, what is the compensation value? And this is very important. Everybody asked about it. And there are many textbooks showing you different values. This is very simplified. And I actually am attached to it since uh, in all my years of experience. Uh, I, there is a first metabolic acidosis, metabolic alkalosis, respiratory acidosis, respiratory alkalosis. In respiratory, there is acute and chronic. Acute and chronic. The drop in uh, the magnitude of drop in CO2 and must be for compensations. Yeah, this is the primary disorders here, as we see. In metabolic acidosis, the primary is drop in bicarb. How much drop in bicarb? I have to multiply by 1.2 to reduce the magnitude of CO2, which must be dropped also. This is a compensation, compensatory factor. And so if bicarb dropped by 10 millimeter mercury, 10 millimeter mercury free timing 1.2 will equal 12, and so the CO2 must drop by 12. If by carb increase by 10 millimeter mercury, also must multiply by 0.7, the drop and as the increase in CO2 must be 7 millimeter mercury. And so 1.2, 0 0.7, 0 0.1, 0 0.4, 0 0.25. This must be uh, uh, memorized. 1.2, 0.7. 0 0.1, 0 0.4 for respiratory acidosis, for respiratory alkalosis, 0 0.2, 0 0.5. Some books write this 1.4 also to uh, simplify the equation. Uh, metabolic, first, after that, respiratory, respiratory acidosis, respiratory alkalosis. This is the primary drop or increase, primary defect or primary problem, and this is the compensation value, how much, by how much compensated, and this is the compensatory factor. If by carb drop, the CO2 must drop. If by carb increase, the carbon dioxide must increase by 0.7. In respiratory, increasing the carbon dioxide in respiratory, the by carb must increase also by 0.1. And the, the in increasing in respiratory chronic state must in, uh, by carb must increase by 0.4. And this is very simple: 1.2, 0.7, 0.1, 0.4, 0.2, 0.5. This is a uh, a compensatory or degree of compensation. Suppose the actual arterial carbon dioxide is more than expected. You have to suspect additional respiratory acidosis. Suppose it is less, it is, there is additional respiratory acidosis. Uh, what is the anion gap? Anion gap, uh, 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 according to many text works, it differs from one to one, but the actual, the average is 12. Uh, we, we, take as, we take it as 12, the anion gap, the normal anion gap. As you see here, what is the determin, uh, determinants of anion gap? There is unmeasured anions and unmeasured cations. The difference between unmeasured anions and the unmeasured cations is about 12 millimeter, millimeter equivalent per meter. 12 millimeter. Suppose I added here any more anions, like, uh, like a, a ketone, body like alcohol, like lactate, and so on, it will increase the anion gap. And so the difference here normally is 12. If it increased more than 12, this meaning there is non-volatile acids added to this pool to the unmeasured value. The other point of importance here, albumin. Most of our patients in ICU, as you know, are critically ill, and albumin is deficit, and so they are suffering from hypoalbuminemia. Every gram drop every gram drop in albumin must be compensated, must be, must, we must add three milli equivalent or three to this number. Suppose the albumin of the patient, our patient is two. I have to add two multiply three, six. If I have to add to this anion gap, six, it will be 
ATM. And so sometimes, sometimes I, I can't remember acidosis because I'm not regarding albumin in the equation. Albumin is very important as a pool of unmeasured anions. It forms about 15 milli equivalent, which is the major anions in our oceans. And so we have to depend on corrected albumin in acid in anion gap estimation. Corrected albumin, not the albumin in front of you. You have to correct it to the normal. Normal albumin level, we, as we know, 4.5 gram in normal patients. If less than 4.5, you have to add three or 2.5 to every gram drop in albumin. Uh, metabolic acidosis, I have the types of metabolic acidosis. I have high anion gap metabolic acidosis and normal anion gap metabolic acidosis, high anion gap as lactic acidosis, ketoacidosis, end stage renal failure, organic acid accumulation, methanol ingestion, uh, formic, uh, formic acid, and so on, ethylene glycol forming lactic acid, and salicylate forming uh, uh, salicylic acid. All these give me high anion gap acidosis. In contrast to normal anion gap acidosis, I see normal anion gap acidosis in this situation, like diarrhea, closing by cardiac. In isotonic saline infusion, as in diabetic ketoacidosis, at first is a patient coming to you with high anion gap acidosis. And by time, by time, during the infusion of saline infusion, you shift the high, the patient from high anion gap acidosis to normal anion gap acidosis. And this, this point is the perfect one to say my patient is corrected or relieved from acidosis. You may find your patient in DKA still having a low HCO3, but with infusion of isotonic saline, he would change to hyperchloromic acidosis, which is a normal anion gap acidosis, and, show, and so will be changed from high anion gap acidosis to normal anion gap. This is a situation which give you normal anion gap acidosis. Diarrhea, losing by carb, isotonic saline infusion, hyperchloremia, early renal insufficiency, renal tubular acidosis, type one, type two, type three, type four. Or renal tubular acidosis give you normal <coughs> summary for that. What is the causes of anion gap acidosis? As you see, uh, endogenous acidosis in cases of uremia, organic acid accumulation, ketoacidosis, lactic acidosis, uh, rhabdomyolysis, exogenous acidosis like ingestion of salicylate iron baraldehyde, other ingestions as methanol, ethylene glycol toxicity, or propylene uh, glycol. Give you, and this is the anion gap equation, how we calculate the anion gap, sodium simplified one, sodium minus chloride plus bicarb. Normally it is about 12. More than 12, this, and do you have to correct the algae? Corrected anion gap, anion gap. Corrected albumin anion gap. We depend on the corrected one, not this simplified one. We, you have to calculate your album. Every gram drop in your albumin percent, we have to add three milli equivalent to your anion gap, which you calculate. This is a gold mark, the, the, the abbreviations for uh, memorize us what is the causes of high anion gap. Metabolic as well as glycol, which are solvent for most of our drugs, serine glycol, propylene glycol. And I think you, uh, most of you will see a case of toxicity with lorazepam from propylene glycol. If used in large dose for two days or three days. Oxyproline, we're seeing it in uh, diabetic patient, malnourished patient. The levolactic acid and must be differentiated from dextrolytic lactic acid. This lactic acid is really formed from fermentation of some bacteria. And so, and see these cases of dex, uh, dextrolactic acidosis in cases of uh, uh, area resection or bariatric surgery. The patient, after eating, suffering from a high level of dextrolactic acid, confusion, acidotic, and so on. Methanol intoxication, aspirin intoxication, renal failure, ketoacidosis, diabetes, starvation, alcohol. All these give you high anion gap acidosis. Normal anion gap again from GIT loss of, bic of bicarb as area and in renal tubular acidosis. Increased anion gap in cases of increased acid production like lactate, D DKA, ketosis, toxins, alcohol, salicylate are or decrease the acid elimination as in case of renal failure. 
the gap gap ratio is another important point to, to tell me what is the type of uh, metabolic acidosis. What is the type? If it is high anion gap acidosis or it is normal anion gap acidosis. It is calculated easily by anion gap excess divided by bicarb gap. Suppose anion gap increases from 12 to 20, uh, to, uh, 20, uh, 20 to increased by 10. Antibicarb dropped by from 24 to 14. Uh, dropped by how much? 10 millimeters and 10 over 10 equal one. From this ratio, from an iron gap excess to bicarb deficit, I can suspect what is the type of acidosis in front of me. If it is diabetic, ketoacidosis, if it is normal ketoacidosis, if it is hyperchloramic, uh, if, it is, if there is mixed, mixed metabolic acidosis and the metabolic alkalosis, as we will see in some uh, examples now. And so from this ratio, you can diagnose your patient. And an iron gap excess divided by bicarb deficit. In the normal condition, any increase in anion gap must be equalized by the same number drop in bicarb. If anion gap excess increased by 10, the, the bicarb must drop by 10. If there is difference, you will see, give me some diagnostic uh, <coughs> protocol. Mixed metabolic acidosis, and so from gap gap ratio, if it is less one, if it is less than one, it indicates that. There is normal uh, anion gap, hyperchloramic metabolic acidosis in addition to high gap anion gap. Uh, this, uh, uh, if it is from one uh, to two, it is a high anion gap metabolic acidosis. If it is more than two, there is high anion gap metabolic acidosis and the metabolic acidosis. This meaning is the increase in anion gap is more, more than the drop in the gap. This meaning the patient is already already has a high bicarb level. And so the, dro the drop is from 24 to a normal value is small. Suppose the patient, you see your patient, the bicarb dropped from 24 to 20 only. This means, and the anion gap increased by about 20. And so this too much increase in anion gap in contrast to the small drop in, metabol in, in bicarb. So th this patient is already suffering from metabolic alkalosis, suffering from increased HCO3. May, you, may, you may inject your patient by, by carb before you diagnose the delta gap. And so the ratio between, or the gap, gap gap or delta gap, give me idea about the type of underlying problem in addition to metabolic acidosis. Uh, Metabolic acidosis and alkalosis. Metabolic alkalosis is common in ICU patient from frequent use of nasogastric suction and diuretics. And there is many, many patients suffering from metabolic acidosis and missed. You can't diagnose it's still by gap gap. If you ignore gap gap, you can't diagnose the missed or oculic metabolic alkalosis. Suppose you, you find your patient in pH normal and high anion gap. PH normal and the high anion gap. This meaning is patient suffering from metabolic acidosis and the metabolic alkalosis at the same time. A smaller gap after that, if you add some solute to the anion, to, to the anion, you add alcohol, you add any solute, you can, you can predict it or diagnose it by a smaller gap. You will find great difference between the measured osmolarity and the calculated osmolarity. Measured osmolarity, which is measured in the lab, and the calculated osmolarity from your, from the patient. Suppose you add ethanol, methanol, ethanol, ethanol, will cause elevated osmolar gap. And as we know, most important because of high anion gap, high osmolar gap is the acids, which is common, ethylene glycol, methanol, propylene glycol, ethylene glycol. At, at start, a smaller gap will be diagnosed within a few hours or one day. After that, it will disappear because of metabolism. And the remaining acids which are formed uh, will stay. But the smaller gap will disappear by time due to metabolism. And so you can't diagnose depending on a smaller gap except in the early hours after ingestion of the toxic uh, alcohol. 
ethylene glycol will give you glycolic acid, hypochloric acid, methanol will give you formic acid, lactic acid, propylene glycol will give you the levo and dextrolactic acid also. Uh, urinary anion gap is another, another gap very important. It gives you an idea about the efficacy of the renal function in maintaining the acid-base ba balance normal. If it is in a negative uh, state, negative ratio, negative value, it gives you this meaning the renal function is competent in excreting chloride and ammonia also. Renal tubular acidosis, as you know, we have four types of renal tubular acidosis, which causes normal anion gap, normal anion gap. As uh, first one, type one, which causes uh, more, uh, it, can, it can't execute uh, the hydrogen from the collecting at the distal duct. The second one, or type, uh, type two, uh, which uh, the, the renal tubules can't really absorb the bicarb. The third one is the mixed one and two. The third one, which is the aldosterone resistance or aldosterone deficiency, type four. And as you know, all uh, type uh, renal tubular acidosis patients are coming to hypotensive, acidotic, uh, hypo, hyperkalemic, hyponatremic, all these. Uh, in fact, where pH, urine pH is high and they suffering from calcium precipitation and so on. This is not our, our topic. The fifth step, fifth, uh, co clinical correlation and interpretation. You have to depend on the clinical situation of the patients. Suppose you told you the patient suffering from muscle disease, chronic muscle disease, but it is a chronic. You are suffering from DK. Uh, clinical evaluation, very important in evaluation. <clears throat> of course, there is a uh, compensation limits uh, for uh, metabolic acidosis, uh, the CO2 can't drop more than less than 10 or more than 60 in metabolic HCO3 can't go up more than 40 and not less than 10. Uh, ABG rules, we have to, uh, uh, this summary the rules of ABG interpretation. Rule one, C2, uh, carbon dioxide or pH abnormal, you have an acid-based disorder. If the carbon dioxide and the pH in the same direction, this is respiratory, if, uh, in, sorry, in the opposite direction, it is respiratory in the same direction, the arrangement in the opposite direction, it is respiratory in the same direction, it is metabolic. Uh, if only pH or arterial CO2 is abnormal, it is a mixed condition. Suppose the arterial carbon dioxide is increased and the pH is normal. It is a respiratory acidosis and at the same time metabolic alkalosis. On the other side, if the pH is abnormal and the carbon dioxide is normal, suppose the pH is low, it is a metabolic acidosis and at the same time, respiratory alkalosis. So <clears throat> again, if only pH or arterial CO2 is abnormal, the condition is mixed. Metabolic and respiratory disorders equal and in opposite direction, opposite disorders. If pH is normal and the arterial CO2 is increased, it is a respiratory acidosis with metabolic alkalosis. If it is res drop, res CO2 dropped at the respiratory alkalosis, pH normal, this meaning respiratory alkalosis and the metabolic acidosis. Uh, <clears throat> Rule for, uh, for a primary metabolic disorders, if the measured arterial CO2 is higher than expected, as I told you, it will be combined with respiratory acidosis and reverse in respiratory acidosis. Rule five for a primary respiratory disorder, normal or near normal HCO3, it is acute state. If the HCO3 is changed high, it is uh, chronic. And as I told you, the pH changed by 0.08 in cases of acute, and it changes by 0.03 in case of chronic. Uh, about giving bicarb, we saw many doctors uh, uh, like to give bicarb in cases, but don't give below, below 7.1 because the bicarb or the carbonic acid dissociate uh, in this shaded area around the PK, at which is 50% of carbonic acid dissociates from 5.1 to 7.1. And as a normal pH uh, value, it will not work. Bicarb will not work. 
it will give uh, increase the osmolarity and give you paradoxical acidosis and give you some problems out and not work. It work only to some extent in this area around the P uh, around the PK uh, 6.1, which is the P50 of the carbonic acid, from 5.1 to 7.1, and one degree, one degree above 6.1 and one degree less than 6.1. There are some cases here I run uh, rapidly for to summarize. Suppose this patient coming to 16 years old female, sudden onset of, of uh, calf and chest and chest uh, pain and secretions. The I uh, look to pH here. pH here are calotic 7.5. Carbon dioxide decrease opposite direction, and so decreased by how much? By 10 millimeter mercury, and so this is a simple. Assemble respiratory, assemble respiratory alkalosis, alkalosis. The compensation, how much I have to multiply the 10 millimeter mercury drop in CO2 by 0 0.2, 0 0.2. And so it equal to, by carb also dropped by 20, by 2, 20. And this is assemble, assemble respiratory alkalosis. It is a case. In these examples, I see here a six-year-old male with progressive respiratory distress and muscular dis dystrophy. Muscular dystrophy is a chronic state from clinical, uh, clinical explanation. It's a, clinic, it's a chronic state. I see here pH is low. Carbon dioxide is high by 36, 76. And so this is a respiratory, this is a respiratory opposite to the pH. The increase in CO2 opposite to drop in pH. And so this a respiratory acidosis, respiratory acidosis. Increased by 36 is meaning the bicarb is chronic. And so, yeah, the bicarb must increase by uh, 15 millimeter mercury. You see for calculations here, you can calculate as acute. I read the pictures here covering the and so this is, a, this is a chronic respiratory acidosis and compensated by, by carb increase down to 35. About oxygen here, what is about oxygen? It is hypoxic because he received 21% and 21% and the difference is high because of high carbon dioxide here, it is a ventilator effect. And so patient suffering from hypoxia due to high Carbon dioxide, chronic respiratory acidosis with hypoxia due to hypoventilation, ventilatory failure. Uh, case three is this patient also accepting here acidotic, pH acidotic, L carbon dioxide increase, L uh, <coughs> bicarb decreased, uh, increase the carbon, it is a respiratory, a respiratory acidosis in opposite direction to pH drop. Increased by nine points, nine millimeter mercury, and so the compensation here is more drop in which is because it must uh, if the compensated must be compensated by point by one millimeter mercury of, uh, of uh, by car, and I have to multiply nine nine points or nine millimeter mercury by point one. It, it, uh, it equal one or two. Uh, Drop in bicarb, it is dropped in too, too much. And so the patient suffering okay. from respiratory acidosis and also metabolic acidosis. Professor, uh, five minutes more, if you don't mind. Really, I have many, many cases. I just talk okay. about okay. Two, two, three cases. If I want to complete the cases, no problem. If uh, you want to stop at the, after two cases, three cases, no problem. Uh, pH Thank here you. is uh, acidotic, by carbon dioxide drop, and also the bicarbonate. So this is the metabolic. All are going down, all are dropping. And so this is a metabolic <coughs> drop in bicarbonate by how much? By about 10 millimeter mercury. And so must increase the CO2 by a uh, drop of the CO2 by how much? 10 millimeter mercury, timing 1.2, it will equal 12, 12 and 23, it is compensated, it is compensated. And so this is a uh, metabolic acidosis compensated by <clears throat> and oxygenation here is well 110 receiving fi2 21 we have to mention in our ebg how much fi2 given to our to calculate the oxygen and there is a high anion gap so long he give you sodium and the chloride and the bicarb he wants to calculate the anion gap. it is a high anion gap metabolic 
acidosis. Uh, these patients suffering uh, also from uh, alkalotic state, pH 7.46, arterial carbon dioxide 28, this is respiratory alkalosis, uh, respiratory alkalosis. The pie carb here must really uh, uh, drop, but, but here is dropped too much right here, and maybe another problem here, it is renal tubular acidosis. We see more drop and uh, bicarb. I can complete the uh, core. Uh, <coughs> or either, uh, I can complete or uh, a four year old chronic renal failure persons. Uh, Dr. Mahdi, I can complete this. Yeah, yeah, two more minutes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Four year old chronic renal failure persons coming to pediatric suffering from uh, level from renal impairment. The pH is 7.37, and arterial carbon is 22, and HCO3 12, all are dropped. And so this is a simple metabolic acidosis. Simple metabolic compensated, yes, because dropped by 12 here, by carb, by uh, dropped by 12. And so 12 timing multiplied by 1.2 for compensation CO2, it will be compensated up to shear compensation. This is a simple metabolic acidosis. Primary <coughs> problem, metabolic acidosis. Simple metabolic acidosis with respiratory compensation. Another case, 15 years old female brought to bed IR in obtained state. Her family is saying that uh, suffering from weakness over the two months, decreased deep tender reflexes, a patient tachypneic respiratory effort, and so on. And arterial carbon side normal, and the HCO3 dropped to seven, and pH dropped to 6.8. This meaning a patient is suffering from acidemia. How much drop in HCO3? It is metabolic because of <clears throat> this normal drop to drop in parallel with the pH. This is a metabolic acidemia, metabolic acidosis. By carb dropped by how much here? By 17 millimeter mercury. The compensation must <clears throat> be for uh, CO2, 17 multiplied by 1.2, it equal about 20, 20 plus 40 will be 60 millimeter mercury. And this patient suffering from metabolic acidosis and also missed respiratory acidosis. The original carbon dioxide is 60 millimeter mercury. So suffering from combined this metabolic acidosis and respiratory acidosis. <coughs> combined the metabolic acidosis and the respiratory acidosis. Another case, or we we'll keep it the last case, a 16 years old male with cycling cell anemia, hemochromatosis, cycling cell anemia, meaning this is Oxygen <coughs> delivery is, uh, there is problem in oxygen donation. Hemochromatosis, meaning there is problem in lactate metabolism. Emesis, meaning the patient is suffering from loss of, of bicarb, maybe alkalotic. Patient hypotensive or systatic, meaning the lactate increase or systatic, confused, maybe respiratory depression. <coughs> and all this give you, give me impression about the clinical situation. <coughs> okay, this is the last one, Dr. Mahal. BH uh, is uh, uh, my apology, because the time is over now, and uh, I know the lecture is very, is very big. So one more minute, if you don't mind, please. Okay. BH patient is alkalotic here, <clears throat> alkalotic, with carbon dioxide 60 to 66. Uh, sodium uh, anion gap henna is also high. Chloride plus bicarb will equal 1.5 from uh, 166, about 10 and 19. Uh, so, Anion gap is high, there is metabolic acidosis in addition to respiratory, uh, <coughs> respiratory uh, metabolic. Here is, if we see here, the patient is alkalemic, pH is high, 7.55. But the anion gap, excepting to me, uh, except high anion gap, so there is metabolic, metabolic acidosis. But the patient to buy carb here is 56. 56, and this is, a, this is the one which causes high pH, 7.5. This is how, how much bicarb increased by about 30 millimeter mercury. 30 millimeter mercury must be multiplied by 0.7 for compensation. It will give me uh, the, uh, 25 uh, nearly, and so CO2 is compensated. And so this patient suffering from metabolic alkalosis and from metabolic Acidosis from high anion. I think enough, uh, to, yeah. enough now. And thank you very much. You, and I hope to benefit from this part. Thanks for you. Thank you very much. Um,
Thank you very much, everybody. And uh, thank you very much to Prof. Samir Lansari. He is um, a great professor of intensive care. And uh, uh, we are so proud listening to him and watching uh, blood gas interpretation as should be. Uh, it is a great success for us today to have Dr. Samir Ansari with us. And thank you very much for your support, Prof. Samir. And hopefully it is not the uh, last lecture. And uh, we should have you some more lecture uh, again. Thank you very much.